Hey, what's going on guys? I am Falygon, and in this video we are going to be looking at how to fix broken anatomy on your ZBrush character sculpts. So this character was sent in by Abdul, and he was asking for some critique and some ideas about how he could improve his character, and I have one very actionable way that we can kind of act upon that. So let's get in and take a look at how we can do that. So taking a look at this character, some of the first uh, couple things that I noticed was that there were definitely some areas where the anatomy is kind of broken in certain aspects, and it feels kind of uh, not very structurally sound, let's say. It feels kind of more like a bag full of jello, maybe kind of here in some of our quadricep areas, and in a couple other areas. So we're gonna take uh, care of those through some very specific tools in ZBrush, one very specific tool, actually. But before we do that, I wanna show you guys an awesome way that you can get some reference directly here inside of ZBrush. And we are actually going to be using 3D reference. So not actual images, but some 3D tools. So if you come up here into your light box, just go ahead and toggle that on, go to the tool tab, and go ahead and double click on the Nick Z Human Male Average Z tool and go ahead and open that up. And then come on back up here and open up the uh, Ryan Kingsline mesh as well. So we'll just double click on those and wait for those to load up. And the first one we'll look at is the uh, Nick Z uh, Human Male Average model here. So this is not super detailed, but it's an awesome object. We can go ahead and toggle on perspective so it's a little easier to see. So it's very clean, very simple, but things are organized in a very nice way. There's some nice poly groups here that make it easy to do some selections. It even has some layers for some different, uh, different positions for the arms and a couple other things. So definitely take a look at this. Uh, I think just looking at things in 3D is very valuable. And uh, you know, when you're looking at 2D images, you can see some discrepancies between some different things, but when you have the option to just kind of rotate around here in 3D, I think things get a lot easier to understand. Uh, another one that I want you guys to check out is the Ryan Kingsline mesh. Again, that was up in the uh, Lightbox tool menu up there. I've already loaded that in here. But essentially what we have here is an écorché version of the kind of Nick Z human male average model that we were just looking at. So this is kind of a flayed model, kind of skinned, and we can see all the different uh, muscles and fat pads going on underneath, and obviously a female as well. Uh, what's awesome about this model, though, is that everything is uh, named and kind of split off here into multiple subtools. So as we can see, we have the skeleton here. This is awesome for figuring out proportions. If you are working on a more standard human character, and now we're working on an orc, and some of the things on that anatomically are going to be quite a bit different and maybe even stylized in some respects. But still here in terms of anatomy, there are some anatomical truths that will always translate over to things that are uh, a little bit more stylized uh, as well. So let's go ahead and keep these in the back of our head. We might reference them a couple times uh, as we continue sculpting on our orc character here that again, Abdul sent in. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one main tool that we are going to be using to go ahead and start pushing this to the next level. So I am going to just go ahead and set this up, get it ready. So like I said, there are a couple areas here where the anatomy is broken. And we want to start getting that to uh, a more refined state. And it's quite difficult to do that when your entire character is a single piece of geometry. The reason for that is because if you want to manipulate your geometry in some way, or for some reason, let's say you want to get some more detail and form over here in your hand and your fingers, and you don't have enough resolution, well, you could subdivide this. But unfortunately, when you subdivide your hand or finger, it's going to subdivide the rest of your geometry. So you're not just increasing the resolution here in your hand, but if I subdivide this, we, we're gonna go from four million all the way up to around 17 million poly. So we're, we're kind of getting way, way past where, um, where we wanna be here. And we don't really need four million polys for what we're even looking at here. We can definitely lower this poly count quite a bit. So the tool that we are going to be looking at today is multiple subtools. If you are unfamiliar with this idea or this term, it's what we're seeing over here in the Ryan Kingsline mesh. So if we look under tool, subtool, a subtool is the individual objects that kind of make up your 3D model. So there's quite a bit of them here. If I toggle on solo mode, we can just quickly scroll through them all as we go through the latissimus dorsi, deltoids through the arms, the legs, everything here, and we can just kind of scroll through those kind of piecemealy, as well as some fat pads and everything else. So very, very cool way of uh, working on your characters, 
and uh, overall, in general, it just makes things a lot easier. So it's a pretty good workflow. Let's go ahead and show how we can get there if we already have something uh, that's at this level here. So what I am going to recommend is by holding the Control and Shift key, we're gonna click up here and choose the Select Lasso. Now I already have that chosen. By default, it should be the Select Rectangle. Let's go ahead and click on that Select Lasso to get that. And then we are going to, again, hold Control and Shift, and we are just going to create a little Selection Lasso around our arms. And essentially what that is going to do, uh, real quick, let's scroll down under Tool, Display Properties, and turn on Double. It makes it a little bit easier to see. It shows backside, uh, uh, the backside normals of your polygons there. So essentially what we're uh, looking at here is a quick little slice to chop off our arms. You can invert your selection by holding Control and Shift and clicking and dragging on your canvas. So that's a good way to go about that. And I am just going to uh, select a little bit more of this. So this time I'm going to hold Control and Shift, do a little marquee selection, and hold Alt. And I'll do a negative selection, so I'm just kind of hiding a bunch of this. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and go down to Tool. We want Geometry, I believe. Or I'm sorry, we want Tool Subtool. Split, and just click on Split Hidden. And that'll run that operation and separate these into two separate subtools. So the main reason I want to chop off the arms from this character right now is because the geometry in this area, the let's say the anatomical form in this area is starting to get a little too a little too kind of fluid and warbly and wonky up through this area. So anatomically, what we would expect coming up from the chest to the arms is not such a gradual kind of sloped transition. If we go back to our uh, Nick Human Male Average model here, we can see a little bit of that, but there's definitely more of a sharp transition up here towards the bottom of the arm. And of course, if you look at your own body in the mirror, you're gonna see your uh, uh, a very similar result as well as you know the armpit and additional uh, anatomical information going on there. So we have a little bit of that going on, but uh, not, not quite enough uh, for what we would expect there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can uh, refine this a little bit further. So from here, I would like to uh, run a Dynamesh operation on this to go ahead and close up these holes and continue working on this model. So let's go ahead and scroll on down to Tool Geometry and open up Dynamesh. And I'm not sure what kind of results we'll get from this resolution that's pretty high. Uh, based on your size, maybe it won't be too bad, but just to be safe so we don't crash, let's just lower that quite a bit and go ahead and do a quick Dynamesh. So I think that's fine. I know we're losing a lot of resolution in uh, a lot of different areas here, uh, but really I don't think we're missing out on too much of the, uh, the form that we have. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that. It looks like maybe there's some problems with uh, thin geometry in a couple other areas but um, we'll just kind of focus on the large forms for now. So we've run Dynamesh. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on our other subtool up here. And I'll just put that around a similar uh, resolution of around 500 and Dynamesh the arms. All right, so now we have two subtools. So what are the benefits here? So like I said, there are uh, many benefits like being able to more easily uh, control your geometry, as long as it's separated. Now I can start raising up the back of this deltoid. The angle was feeling pretty awkward and droopy there, so we can start messing with that, cleaning that up a bit, and eventually start working on uh, fixing that transition. Another area was the bottom of our arm, that armpit, so I can maybe start pushing this in quite a bit to uh, start subducting that up under there and work on that transition slowly but surely. So this definitely needs to uh, uh, receive a few changes here, as well as probably getting a little bit more of a uh, serratus uh, muscle kind of flowing through here. So no big deal on that. We'll just kind of play around with that there and continue to sculpt that up until we start getting more and more of an armpit. Uh, the connection back here is feeling a bit awkward as well, so we can maybe kind of play with that. And there's kind of a lot of information going on here in the back, but overall the main shape is, you know, in a pretty good, uh, pretty good position in terms of silhouette. We could probably play with that a little bit and get that cleaned up. 
But let's continue to focus on our arms and a couple more of the uh, other benefits that we would expect to see from using uh, multiple subtools. So from here, if I wanted to, for some reason, increase or decrease the resolution in my arms, and I think we're still a little too high poly, so let's go ahead and do that next. I'm going to uh, use Z Remesher for this. If you're unfamiliar with the tool, it's uh, essentially an auto topology tool, very similar to Dynamesh. It redistributes polygons. I'll throw a link to a tutorial up in the top right-hand corner of the screen if you guys want to learn more about the difference between Z Remesh and Dynamesh. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uncheck freeze borders there and set this to adaptive and put this on maybe around five or so. And maybe, maybe even less. Let's stick with five because that's the default I know. And then just go ahead and click on Z Remesh. So I have now dropped the poly count from 150,000 polys all the way down to 10,000 polygons. And we really haven't lost a lot of information here. There's maybe you know a, a very, very slight amount of detail that we're not getting anymore. And it looks like the geometry is a little faceted, but uh, that's not really much of a problem because we can always subdivide and smooth that out later on. So what we can look at here is this little uh, divide option here, which is how we add subdivisions, right? But we don't want to do that. We want the geometry to be a uh, lower resolution. We could also look at adding dynamic subdivs, which is just a pre-visualization of what that geometry looks like. Uh, but we don't really need to do either of those right now. We can just kind of leave it where it is. And uh, the main objective here is kind of showing off that with a much lower resolution, over 10 times smaller than what we had before, we're still kind of keeping the same form. So what's the benefit of lowering our resolution like this? Well, Primarily, the less polygons you have, the easier it is to manipulate your geometry. The reason for that is if I were to take a, uh, let's say a move brush here on our back, and I wanted to adjust my back, let's say I wanted to push it in a little. The uh, more I start playing with this and pushing it in with my move brush, the more polygons we have to manipulate and move around. So you're, you're gonna start getting some warping eventually on, uh, on some level here. But the less polygons we have, like here in our arm, it's a lot easier to manipulate and control a lot of this geometry. So a good rule of thumb is only use the amount of polygons that you need to uh, get the results at the level that, that, you, that you need. So for, for example, here in our arms, you know, I could probably lower this poly count down, even down to maybe one or 2K polys for all the different forms and shapes that we're seeing. And now that I have a lower poly count here, it's much easier for me to come through with my move brush and start making some large scale changes. It's even easier for me to do things like smooth out some of my form. So for example, you know, I wanna start getting that more of a pull out here in the elbow and just start cleaning up my surface. And it's just so much easier for me to do this when the geometry is clean. The smooth brush is, you know, a very destructive tool and it's something that you have to get used to but the more you kind of play around with that, the easier it's going to be. And then the other brush I'm using here is just my Folygon clay brush. If you guys want to get something uh, similar, you can either go download my brushes from my Gumroad or there is uh, a couple clay brushes in ZBrush that you can get some fairly similar uh, results with. We'll just kind of continue playing around with the form here a little bit, just doing some quick little adjustments and refinements to our arm. And now let's go ahead and get some of that volume back in. I think our Anatomy was just a little incorrect here in the forearm. We had some really strong awkward splits in quite a few areas. So I wanted to clean that up first and now I can kind of build that back up slowly but surely. And then there's a, uh, you know, quite a bit of other information that we can continue to work on here to, um, you know, raise the believability of some of what we're seeing. Even in stylized characters, like I said before, there is uh, definitely some anatomical truths in there because, uh, you know, if, if, if you have a stylized character and the uh, stylized anatomy is just kind of all over the place, it's not going to be very relatable, it's not going to be very appealing, and it's going to be, uh, be very awkward and probably a little gross, uh, which is, I think, a little bit of what we had going on here in some of the uh, geometric information in our arm. Sp uh, specifically more so the forearm, I think, but uh, I think we can kind of carry a lot of that through up through here. So again, 
now that I have this arm separated, it's just so much easier for me to go, uh, to go through here and continue manipulating this geometry. If I didn't split this arm off, I would not be able to uh, create all the changes that I'm doing right now as easily as I am. So because I have used multiple subtools over here, things are just so much easier to manipulate. And I hope that that is um, you know, a lot easier to, um, to see. If this is not something that you have ever played around with, multiple subtools, I highly encourage you to do it. Um, once you start doing it, you're never gonna look back. It's literally how everybody that uh, sculpts for any length of time in ZBrush uh, starts working. Uh, so it's pretty much the go-to workflow for everybody. Uh, other than that, you know, it's pretty much the same thing of repeating this process in a bunch of different areas. So we would probably do the same thing in the legs. I would probably split these off and continue to refine those. I would probably even consider splitting off the arms and hands and continuing to work on those. In terms of other areas, I think where the anatomy uh, it just feels kind of uh, very bloated and uh, irregular and kind of needs um, and kind of needs another pass would be down here in the quadriceps, down in the legs and the uh, calves, how the um, information is transitioning back here into your, oh, bicep femoris, something like that, the back of your legs, your hammies, you know, the colloquial term for them. Uh, the traps and the transition between the, um, the neck into the torso in general feels pretty awkward and thick. Uh, so I would probably uh, work on that a little bit more. I've already mentioned some stuff here in the torso, but the transition for the hips through here feels uh, very kind of bony and bloated. It almost feels like this is supposed to be some cloth sculpted on top, or maybe even some armor. Um, so, so I would say anatomically, this just kind of feels very awkward in the pelvis. Uh, up into the chest, there's probably a couple things here that I would start to tweak to um, get that feeling a little bit more concise, specifically from the profile and uh, mainly that would be just kind of flattening that out, and I think that's really going to start to um, make a bit more sense once you start working on the neck a little bit more. Up into the face, there's quite a few changes that could be made here. The main thing that I would say up here in your face is to really start working on the depth, and I really think that will help push that to the next level. So specifically, uh, everything's just feeling very flat on the same plane right now. If we look at this from the side or top-down view, everything just feels very squashed. So looking at some other characters or some other anatomy, just to get an idea of how much depth actually exists in the face, we can see how far back that corner of the eyes uh, is here in this anatomy model, the corner of the nose and the mouth and everything else. So there's definitely a lot more uh, volume and wrap going on there than what we're seeing in, uh, in this character here. And that's what ends up making him feel very squashed and flat and uh, pretty unappealing there in the face. So those are the main things that I would look at in terms of more anatomical adjustments. I think there's quite a bit more that could be done to this to really push it to that next level, but try playing around with sub tools and I really think that'll help you get there. All right, that's gonna be everything for this video. I hope that was helpful for you, Abdul, as well as other people tuning in to learn how to fix their broken anatomy using multiple sub tools in ZBrush. If you guys are new around here, click the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.